Well, hello there, good evening, and welcome back to AOPA's Pilot Information Center webinar series. Thanks so much for joining us. Our topic for this webinar is Advanced Flight Planning, Decision Making Made Easy. This webinar, which is the second in our series, is brought to you by Lockheed Martin. For more information, you can visit their website at www.1800wxbrief.com. I'm Ferdy Mack with AOPA's Pilot Information Center here in Frederick, Maryland. Joining me this evening is Joe Danielli. Joe is a senior engineer with Lockheed Martin in their Flight Service Station Group. Good evening, Joe. How you doing, Ferdy? Thank you for having me here. Thank you for being here. I'm doing very well. Appreciate your your uh, your participation in this. Um, we have some uh, show notes here uh, for those folks that are joining us. Uh, we do have the ability to answer your live questions during the presentation this evening. Uh, if you're into our webinar system by now and you're able to hear this and see the slides, you should also be able to see a section on the screen where you can enter your questions. So, uh, we'll be able to, to answer your questions there via text in the, in the text box. And we'll also be pulling in some of the more popular questions to be addressed either during the flow of the, the slides this evening or we'll collate some of them uh, to be handled in a Q&A session near the end. Actually, we'll do both. So my friend Joe here, <clears throat> you may have run into him by now already if you've uh, been in attendance among other places at any of our, our recent uh, AOPA uh, regional fly-in events. Uh, I had the pleasure of hanging out with Joe at the Lockheed Martin booth uh, twice now uh, recently, once in Colorado Springs and prior to that at Anoka, Minnesota. And I'll tell you, uh, most of the time I was showing up either at the beginning or the end of the show by virtue of the fact that I was working the show as well, but uh, even on the bookends of the front and the back end of the show, you've got a lot of fans. Uh, there seems to be a lot of traffic and interest in, in what we're doing, and it, that's a good thing. And your shows bring in uh, an inc incredible amount of people. So, And they're excited about your, your offerings, and, and frankly, I am too. It's, uh, it's a lot of great stuff. Uh, our first episode that we put on a few months ago uh, covered some of the wonderful uh, graphical weather tools, among other things, that can help you see not just what the weather might be affecting your flight, but what the weather might be affecting your flight at the time you're passing that point of your right. flight, right. which is, in my mind, one of the, the revolutionary things that you're bringing to, to pilots as far as awareness and safety. So uh, what are we going to cover this evening? Uh, moving forward, we're going to see some new and interesting stuff, huh? Yeah, we're going to um, we're going to talk a, a little bit about our our, our advanced flight planning tools. Uh, uh, but before I get into that, um, I just want to reiterate what Ferdy said. Uh, please ask questions. We have uh, a couple people from Lockheed sitting uh, with us tonight, um, Heidi and Joshua, and they're eager to take your uh, questions. Um, the ones we don't get to, we will answer them. We will answer all of them. It may not be tonight, but we will get to them at some point. Um, so please ask. And a previous webinar is still on our YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, uh, you may want to log into the, you know, log onto the web portal, or at least access the website and, and take a look at that. So, and you're going to be showing us an easy way to find those resources in a little while. Yes, I am. Yes, yes. I am. We'll go through that too. All right. So, we'll jump right into it. Okay. So, actually, before I get into um, talking about the advanced flight planning stuff. I want to talk about the changes we made to our home page and to some of the registration things we did. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback from pilots, and, um, and we listen to the pilots. Uh, like, like everybody knows, and I've been touting, you know, our, our motto is uh, um, you know, you know, powered by Lockheed Martin. But what you're about to see and what we've been showing you all along is, just, is designed by pilots. Make no mistake about it. This is built by pilots. We don't put anything on here that doesn't make sense for a pilot to, to be using. So keep that in mind. All right. All right. So <clears throat> this is our new home page. Uh, we've gotten uh, a lot of feedback asking, well, there's times I just want to log on, get some weather. I want to look at my airports. I, I want to get some airport information, things like that. So we thought, great idea. So rather than logging in, what we'll do is when you hit the 1-800-WXBrief.com website, you, can now, you now have access to all of the weather charts. Um, it's simple. You just hover over it, click on any of the uh, weather charts you want. We have sectional charts in there. Um, you'll notice that when I uh, moved over and highlighted the flight planning and briefing tab, it says, please log in to access. 
Uh, we do that very specifically and, and conscientiously. When, you, when we do briefings or when you request briefings and file flight plans, we need to record that information on who did it. Um, and that's, uh, it's just something we have to do to keep in our, our database uh, actually to protect you guys. And it's not just for your benefit, it's for the pilot's benefit as well. If we don't have that information stored, you're not going to get as accurate a briefing as well. We'll, we'll uh, highlight that more yep, later. Yep, course. absolutely. And uh, just in case uh, there was an incident or something and you know, they question whether you got a briefing or not, we have a record of it. So um, that's why it's there. Um, you can access airports. You can put in any airport identifier and, and get um, the equivalent of an AFD out of it. Um, we have a new tab. It's called UAS. That's, uh, that's our, um, our, our unmanned uh, aircraft uh, systems. Uh, we have uh, the ability to view all of the UASs that are in the system, the, the CONUS, uh, the country now, and Hawaii and Alaska. Uh, the account page, you have to obviously log in to, to view um, your account information. We do have links, several links, to FAA websites, uh, the AOPA website, um, and DOT. Uh, this is just for your, um, just to make it easier, you want to look at um, anything that, uh, on, on the websites for the FAA and things like that, we have access to. And the same thing with help. If you want to look at some help, uh, the contractions and things like that, um, and a user guide, uh, you can do that. All right. the, the other thing that um, really came through loud and clear from the pilots is, you know, we really like the, um, you know, the, the uh, services that you provide, <clears throat> but I, I can't seem to get to them easily. Mm -hmm. So what we did, and we have a, a really top-notch uh, user interface guy, uh, Doug, he, um, he redesigned our entire front end. Um, and what you'll see there is those are the five services that we offer and we put them right on the home page for you to access. Now, you'll notice that everything is accessible for, at this point. I am now logged into the, the pilot web and what you're looking at is our dashboard and you can see my name right there. Um, so you know that I, that I logged into the, to the website at this point. Um, we'll go through each of these um, at a fairly high level, and if you want more details, just log into the website, and we have all the information. We have videos and things like that, and I'll get into that in a minute. But the first thing we want to look at is, is ACAS, and what is ACAS? That's our alerting service. Um, you file a flight plan, you get a briefing two hours before your departure time. We'll start sending you updates um, by email or text message if any adverse conditions happen to pop up along your route of flight, like a TFR mm -hmm. or adverse weather condition. You'll see that there's some color coding around ACAS and Easy Activate. There's no color coding around ACAS. That means I haven't registered for ACAS. And if I pull up the, uh, if I click on that button, on the bottom, the, uh, in, enclosed by the red, uh, uh, Bar, the bar there, it says not registered. So right now, I'm not getting the services of the alerting, uh, I'm not getting the uh, alerting services. Uh, that's easily taken care of. You just put in your email address or your text message and we'll start sending them to you. Uh, the next one is the easy activate and easy close. This is a nice feature for VFR uh, pilots. If We'll send you an email or a text message with a link in it. All you have to do is touch that link and your flight plan is active at that point. Uh, same thing with easy close. We'll send you an email or a text. You touch that link and your flight plan is closed. Um, an easy way just to, to activate, open and close your flight plans without having to call flight service. Not only no phone call required, but no uh, half duplex communication required by, over VORs anymore either. That is correct. That is correct. As long as you have an internet connection or you have access to 3G or whatever you're, however you're accessing your, you know, your, whatever your phone is using or your iPad, you'll have access to this. Um, Close <laughs> reminders, and the reason it's green <clears throat> is because you'll look at the bottom there and it says I'm registered. I'm having my easy activate and easy close um, reminder sent to me by email. You can see my email address down there. All right. Um, close reminders. Um, not that I've ever forgot to close a flight plan ever, but 20 minutes past your ETA. I don't know, I don't know what that look on your face, man. I'll just uh, we'll move on. Yeah. So 
20 minutes past your arrival time, your scheduled arrival time, we'll send you an email um, and we'll let you, and we remind you that you haven't closed your flight plan. Um, ATC notices, uh, this is another service. Uh, you file your flight plan, uh, you're waiting for an acknowledgement from center, you want to make sure that flight plan got in, we'll send you an email to let you know that it's been accepted by center. If your route changes, we monitor um, the, the routes that ATC uh, has for your flight plan, and if it changes, we'll send you an email with the new route in there. Uh, so that's ATC services. And the last one we have up there is SESAR, and you'll notice that it's yellow. Well, that means I registered for this service, but I haven't completed the registration process. So if I open it up, I click on the button there, at the bottom there it says confirmation required. It's just an extra step that confirms that you actually reached out to your service provider mm -hmm. to allow them to send us your position information so we can monitor where your flight is along your route of flight. And then we do this for VFR flight plans. SESAR mm -hmm. is Surveillance Enhanced Search and Rescue. In the event we stop receiving position information or reports on where you are, we will start a search and rescue right then and there, Ferdy. We are not going to wait for 20 minutes or 30 minutes past your ETA. Mm -hmm. So um, you could be on a three-hour flight, and if something happens, say, an hour into it, we're going to start looking for you right then and there. So just to be clear, we're not talking about ATC here. You said position reports from a service provider. Correct. Um, I'll go into a couple of them later on, but okay. things like Spot and um, you know, those types of devices. Um, and this is, it is not ATC. This is not flight following. This is, this is not air traffic control. This is under the covers. We're just monitoring. You're, you're, we're making sure we're continuing to receive those, those position reports. Okay. All right. And then before we move into the advanced services, we really need to make sure that our aircraft profile has everything in it to let us afford and get the services that, that we're requesting. And we're going to talk about that right now. So you'll notice that this is the aircraft um, information page. Uh, I clicked on that button. I clicked on the aircraft, my aircraft button right there. And what it does is it brings me to this page. And it tells me what my primary aircraft is. And we're going to be talking about aircraft information. All of the information that you see on this page, if you put it in, will be transferred to your flight plan form when you open up the flight plan form. You don't have to retype any of this stuff. So for, like I said, your aircraft ID, the aircraft type. This is the position reporting devices that I was talking about, um, the DeLorme, the, the spots, spider tracks, things like that. If you have one of those devices in your aircraft, you can put it in here and we'll remember that that device is tied to this aircraft, mm -hmm. okay? Um, your the color, your fuel capacity, and you notice this one's in green. Um, we ask for fuel capacity for one important reason, and that's really in the event of um, an incident or an accident, we need to know how much fuel you have on board. Draw radius. It's exactly right. You depart from, you know, airport A, you have 34 gallons of fuel on board. We always assume that's maxed out. We draw a circle around that point, and that's our search area. Um, so again, it doesn't go in your flight plan itself, but it helps for search and rescue purposes. Our, our specialists use it. Uh, home base, uh, the phone number, all that gets put into your flight plan, as does your equipment and airspeed. Okay, and that's for a domestic flight plan. And you'll see that we have the ability to save ICAO um, equipment and surveillance and, and cruise speed. All right? And this is what's really important. And when I say it's really important, it's if you don't put this information in, you don't provide it, we can't do some of the calculations that you're really looking for and you need using these tools. Um, Pick, pick your units, gallons, uh, put in your, your, your burn uh, for startup and taxi. Uh, your climb performance. Uh, tell us what your airspeed is. Tell us what your fuel burn is on climb out and, and the rate. Same thing with your cruise. Tell me what you're burning you know, uh, per hour on, on fuel. Now, for 
little high performance aircraft. Um, we've added this uh, the ability to put in burn rates uh, per hour. Um, gives you a much more accurate uh, picture of mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing over the course of a flight, five hour flight maybe, or six hour flight. And if you don't know exactly what that is, what we do, it, there's a little help button. And you'll see these throughout the website, uh, a what's this button. You just click on it and it gives you a little uh, blurb on what that feature does. But these burn rates, um, as you, um, you get more efficient as time goes on. So the, the fuel burn will go down and we take that into account um, calculating the different um, intersection times and, and burns, uh, fuel burn. And then, uh, like, like so, your, um, your descent performance, you know, your airspeed and your fuel burn on descent. This is really important to get this in, and I'm going to reiterate it a couple times throughout this uh, presentation because without it, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't help give you what you need. And the reason we made it such that we're asking you to put this information because the pilot said, well, why don't you just use some standard stock mm -hmm. values? The answer is because not all aircraft perform the same way. Uh, people may have done modifications to, to, to an aircraft. I would rather, I'd rather take two, two minutes and fill out this chart rather than some system tell me what my climb rate is, what my burn rate is, things like that. So that's why we asked. I talked to a Bonanza pilot once who mm -hmm. uh, was just tickled pink that he could fly his, I think it was a 285 force Bonanza at 55% power. And you know, therefore giving him a much more nominal burn rate in his mind, albeit yet at a speed that was slower than I'd like to go. Right. But he was perfectly comfortable with. So if right. he, so we can't pop pre-populate. A36 goes 170 knots and burns 14 gallons if that pilot's not even using that throttle. Set. Right. Not to mention, as you said, what engines he got. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, that's we, we just don't want to make any assumptions here. That's all. Okay, so we're going to move into flight planning or the advanced uh, capabilities that we have. And just as a reminder, um, I don't know if you, you did or did not attend the uh, previous uh, webinar that we had. Um, to access our flight planning and briefing and, and uh, features, you hover over the flight planning and briefing um, tab like I, I show you up there. And then what you want to do is click on briefings, flight plans, and nav logs. Um, we're not going to cover briefings. We covered that uh, extensively in, in the first one. And again, go to our website and you'll see a YouTube. You know, you'll see videos there. And I believe uh, our our first webinar is still on that website. So you click on that. And we're going to talk about the first thing we're going to talk about for advanced flight planning is the evaluating the departure time. Right, this is our standard flight plan form. This is the domestic. Um, form. Uh, everybody should be very familiar with this. Uh, we're going to focus in on the center there, the, the red box, um, and, and we're, I have evaluate circled. Now, what evaluate does is it takes the information along your route of flight and it will calculate or determine what those conditions are along your route of flight. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. And what we use is the departure, the destination, and your departure time to calculate this. You can have a route of flight in there, that, that's fine too. Um, but I haven't determined my route of flight yet, so that's why it's blank. Um, so I hit the evaluate button, and lo and behold, this chart pops up, and you go, what the heck is that? Um, and I'm going to get into everything we have on there, but this picture tells almost a complete story on what your flight profile looks like from Asheville down to Lynchburg. So departure on the left and arrival airport on the right there at the top. Yep, you'll see up in the upper left, uh, ASH over to the right is Lynchburg. Um, and it, you'll see it's Eastern Daylight Time. Our, our system, our pilot web will default to whatever your computer setting is. So obviously I'm on, well not obviously, I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> so I, 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 my computer is set to Eastern Daylight Time. Having said that, I can put in any time zone I want. Mm -hmm. If I know I'm leaving out of the Midwest, I, 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 I can change it if I want it to. Or okay. UTC for our military brethren, they want to file, the, um, or if people are comfortable with UTC. Uh, what I want to do is take a minute, just 
that's your legend down there, and it gives you the color coding of uh, the tasks. Um, the green, blue, red, uh, pink, and yellow. I think we're all familiar with those color codes, uh, VFR, marginal, IFR, and low IFR. The reason we have a yellow U there is because it, we can't, there's, if you have a flight that's, say, you know, two days out in the future, we don't have TAP information mm -hmm. that far out. So it, it's unknown to us, so we can't, we can't calculate that for you. Um, the hash marks indicate that there is some type of adverse condition along that route of flight. I can't define everything that's in there, but this is a quick visual to let you know there is an adverse condition there. Right. So, and what's interesting, though, is you take the top line, uh, 2300, 11 p.m. You're telling me that for a, you know, a, a pretty large segment of the middle of my flight, I've got green circles with Vs and then VFR. So the weather's VFR. Right. But all I said was the weather's VFR. Correct. Yeah, you're telling me that there are still adverse conditions. So, so can you expand on what that entails? Yes, I can. <laughs> that was a good question. We have this little what's this button down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if I click on that what's this, it tells me what that is. And it tells me exactly what those adverse conditions can, can contain. TFRs, convective SIGMETs, SIGMETs, AIRMETs, CWAs, and AWD, AWA. AWWs, sorry about that. So even though it's VFR, like Ferdy says, I could have a TFR along that route of flight. You don't know that just by looking at this picture, but you know you have something there that you need to investigate. Or it could be 5005, but uh, VCTSRA. Correct. Um, in the TAF, and I want to harp on this again, not in the TAF for now, but in the TAF the time I'm going to be passing that point, right? Yes, that's a really good point. Um, say you're halfway down, you know, this chart, um, or you know, you're in the middle of this chart. We are not giving you the conditions at those um, uh, reporting stations at the time that you click this. It's calculated. Your ca that's the calculated time down the route. Mm -hmm. So. If it's VFR, it could be marginal right now at departure time, but it's expected to be VFR when you're at that point. Yep. So that's what that is. Um, so you, we're looking at um, five, five o'clock departure. Uh, let's say you're a VFR pilot. You look at that and you go, oof, um, Lynchburg is showing IFR conditions. I don't even think I want to attempt that. So you look up and down the row, uh, up and down these rows, and you go, where would I feel most comfortable? Well, it looks like starting at like 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you've got a much better chance of making that flight. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> what you do, what I've done is I've just highlighted the, the 9 o'clock row. And now what I can do is I can select that row, and it will come back into, it will be brought back into the flight plan uh, template, and I'll show you that. One very important note up top. In the, red in the red box, it says, this is not a substitute for a full briefing. This is just a high-level overview of what your conditions are going to be like based on the terminal area forecast when you depart Asheville and get down to Lynchburg. One way to splice the weather data is not the full picture. Correct. If I saw nothing but red all over the place, <laughs> m m my time would be done on, on for flight planning. Right. I, I, I'd be done. I would, Back okay, to bed. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not going tomorrow, that's, <laughs> and that's that. That's what this is for. Okay. All right. So I hit the select button for 9 o'clock. Now you see right in the middle of the flight plan form, you see that 0900 was brought into the flight plan form. Now. What I like to do next is determine my route. So, and, and, and let's be clear about this. I don't, this is the way I do my flight planning. I pick my departure time first based on my departure destination. Then I go to my route. Um, my friend uses the, the tool. He does his route first and then does his time. Uh, six of one, half a dozen, the other, I, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And you can do either one multiple times, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter but I choose to do evaluate first. So next thing we're going to look at, oh, before we go into the next one, I wanted to pull up the, um, uh, the, the ICAO form uh, just to show that we do the exact same, we have the same functions available 
in the um, in the ICAO form as we do the domestic form. Mm -hmm. So you want to evaluate, you know, your time, or you want to optimize your altitude, or plan a route for a particular, you know, flight. We do that with the with the uh, KO form as well. Um, and I know I, I I've been to a lot of shows, and there's a lot of concern about going to the ICAO form by pilots. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's new. I, I don't blame them. It, it, it's not what we're used to, right? I mean, right. we're used to jumping on a domestic form and doing it. We have videos um, that uh, actually throughout the throughout our website. But specifically for the ICAO form, you see in the upper right-hand corner, that red box, you click on that, it gives you a very detailed summary explanation of the fields. You can start it, stop it when you want. Um, we have a gentleman in Prescott, um, Eric, he, he has a knack of putting these things. He's a pilot, he's a seasoned pilot, so he knows what you're looking for, and he understands this form. You know, better than all of us, and he goes into a, a discussion about it like like nobody else. So, take the time to watch it. Um, it it's just tremendous information. Thirty seconds while we're on ICAO. Two things. <clears throat> Pardon me. Number one, uh, would you agree the ICAO flight plan form is ninety percent the same as what we've been using all along, as from the far as the, the, the domestic form? Yes, absolutely. So, so the the incremental level of difficulty is marginal and once understood is completely behind you because you can pre-populate this stuff right and and, and yep. never, never have to deal with it again and that's exactly right Ferdy. once you i mean it, it's cruise like cruising speed we we're, we're used to just putting in one six zero well you put n zero one six zero it, it's just the way they format it and once you know that it's done Right. And then you just save it, and it's you don't ever have to think about it again. So it's things like that. So there's one other question coming mm -hmm. up, which is, don't I have to do this now? Not yet. So um, they, there it was going to be October 1 of 2015, um, but it's going to be the, the plan is for October 1 of 2016 mm -hmm. to start using this form um, in, in, in lieu of the NAS flight plan form. And I think the benefit of having this available sooner is that we can decouple for pilots out there the uh, the learning curve, the exposure, the the beginnings of using this from the, the requirement. Because right. if, if I'm told to, that I have, I'm required to use it today and I have to learn to use it today, that's a double whammy. Yep. So by all means, I, I concur with you, Joe. Get in there, have a look at it, check out the video, and let's start looking at the fields. Start using it. Yes, you can use an ICAO form for domestic flight plans. Right. It, it, it's it, it's a misnomer, you know. It's mm -hmm. a bad name, right? I mean, we call a domestic a domestic and an ICAO. It was used for international flying, but there's you can absolutely use this for for domestic flying. Great. Thank All right. All righty. So we're going to get into plan a route. Okay. Um, we in the green in the middle there. You see our optimized uh, departure time. What I'm going to do now on the right there in the red box, you see plan a route. So I'm going to plan a route using my departure and destination, um, Asheville and Lynchburg. You can have anything you want in that route field right now. It's going to ignore it because all I'm looking for is tell me how to get from Asheville to Lynchburg. And those are the four options that we have right now. Uh, IFR will give you the most recent ATC assigned routes, um, low altitude airways, Victor routing. Uh, FAA preferred routes and coded routes. All right, and I just wanted to throw something in there that um, within a release or two, we're going to have additional routing options for J, T, and Q routes. Um, and like I said, that's forthcoming. All right, so we're looking at Asheville and Lynchburg. I'm going to pick my low altitude airway. I'm going to be a VFR pilot today. Um, I want to, I select the we find a route button, and it gives me the most direct route between Asheville and Lynchburg. It doesn't give me a lot of different options. I'm asking it to give me the most direct route from my departure to destination, and that is the route that it came up with. If for some reason you're not comfortable with that route, you can click on the bottom left there. I highlighted in uh, a blue box, a hash mark there, hash uh, lines. Um, you can go back to find a route. If you like what you see there, 
just go over to the select button and hit it. And what that does, it brings your it brings that route into the route in, into the, the route field of your flight plan. So you don't have to copy it, you don't have to paste it or anything like that. You just hit the select, boom, and it goes in there, and now you're ready to go. So now I have my time done and I have my route done. Now, we also have a couple other options for routing. Uh, actually, that's, that's what the route looks like from Asheville down to Lynchburg. I just wanted to give you a visual of what, of what the system calculated. That's the uh, NAVAIDs and all the Victor routes. Um, what we do in our system is we expand the Victor routes for you. Um, <clears throat> rather than just put Victor 206, we actually show you what the the route, the, um, the nav aids are along Victor 206. Each fixed in the intersection. Yes. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Okay. Let, let's look at IFR, um, ATC routes that have been assigned. Um, I picked this route, um, Monterey down to San Diego. I select my Find Route button. And what the system does, it goes and pulls the last 15 routes for for the past 24 hours. Um, we don't filter on altitude or anything like that. We just want, hey, give me what the last, you know, the last 15 uh, routes uh, were over the past 24 hours, and we'll let you guys pick which one you want. If there are more than, you know, what you see there, a scroll bar would come up on the right-hand side, and you have the ability to scroll up and down. And we also add, like, how many flights were assigned that route over the past 24 hours. Um, so, um, chances are you're going to get one of these routes. Uh, so, pick one that you want. You can pick the second one there. Uh, highlight that select button. And then when I hit select, again, it'll bring it back into the route. Mm -hmm. right, the other one I want to talk about is FAA preferred routes. <clears throat> and again, I'm going from Ashburg down to Lynchburg, Asheville to Lynchburg. I'm going to define routes. And this one tells me that I don't have any PREF routes. Um, not all departure destination pair have preferential routes from the FAA. These are, these are FAA generated <laughs> routes, mm -hmm. and not all, all pairs have them. As the, the uh, typical instrument student will find out as they're training for their check ride when they start to learn about preferred routes, or even a private pilot uh, student uh, looking in the back of the AFD. Remember those old green paper books? Uh, what? what? <laughs> paper book? Yeah, the uh, preferred route <laughs> published in the back. They want to find right. the preferred route from grandma's house to grandpa's house airport. And that not, ain't happening. Not always in there. That's not happening. Yeah. So the point of this is I, I wanted to show you that if we don't have, if there's nothing there, we're, we're going to clearly tell you that there's nothing there. <clears throat> and again, you go back, lower left here, it says go you know, back to find routes, and it'll bring you back to the routes. Um, so for demo purposes, I'm going to go from JFK to Atlanta. Much higher probability of finding a PREF route, an FAA preferred route, for that departure destination pair. I hit my button, and bing, there you go. It shows me that I have at least three PREF routes, preferential routes, or preferred routes between JFK and Atlanta. Um, we fill in as much information as we possibly can, um, and in this particular instance, the last one on, uh, in that row is an RNAV only. So uh, if you're not capable of RNAV, you don't select that one, obviously. So pick the one you want. Um, you highlight it. Now when you hit the select button, again, it will be brought back into your uh, route. <clears throat> All right. So that's that's some that that's an example of IFR the v, the Victor routes the FA preferred routes and the last one is the coded departure routes. These are very um, specific um, ATC routes that most of us will never use um, or have never even seen before. I've never even seen before, but um, they're there. Um, we hit the find route, and it tells me that I have coded routes between. Uh, JFK in Atlanta, and there they are. You can see on the right-hand side you have a scroll bar. That means there's more down there, so you can look through them, pick one of them, and it, it identifies the equipment code. If you're not familiar with the equipment code, what we do, we have a little help button there, and we tell you that 
uh, for example, number one, basic navigational routes. Um, just a little uh, a helpful hint there. All right, so pick one. Again, you hit the select button, it's going to be brought back into your flight plan mask and your flight plan form, and you're on your way. Uh, so that's an overview of all four uh, planner out uh, capabilities. And like I said, we are adding um, three new capabilities. So now, oh yeah, one last thing. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with the coded <clears throat> departure routes, we do provide a link there for you, and it takes you right to the AC um, that describes the general aviation, the coded, uh, the coded routes. Uh, if you want to take a look at that, have at it. All right, so I have my time. That I figured out my best time. I have a route of flight <clears throat> that I like. Now what I want to do is optimize my altitude. Um, right now you see that I have selected 95. Um, that's just the, the altitude I, I like flying at. I sure. mean, that's just my, <clears throat> that's just the one I use almost all the time. Uh, so when I hit that optimize button, what the system does, it goes in and says, okay, he wants to fly at 95. I'm going to calculate your en route time, and I'm going to calculate the fuel. It says I'm going to be two hours and 59 minutes en route, and I'm going to burn 30, 33 gallons of fuel. Um, now I look at that and I go, well, if I want, I look up and down, and at 75, it's a... Uh, you know, two hours and 54 minutes, uh, 32.3 gallons of fuel. So if I do select the 75, I mean, I'm down 2,000 feet, but I'll save, a, you know, a little bit of fuel, I'll save a little bit of time. I select that, and what that does is it brings that value of 75 back into my altitude field up top there. You see it circle, it, it, it's in a green box there. Right. So what we've really done is uh, we started by nailing down our key variables, which is where we're leaving from and where we're going to. And we started by uh, using the departure date and time box to evaluate based on, in broad strokes, what the weather is like, what the best time to go would be. Right. And then we nailed that down. So then we moved on to the, the route of flight tool where we use plan a route to pick the route and have the route given yep. to us yep. based on which flavor of routing tool we'd, we like to use. And then finally, based on the routing, we went up to the altitude box and used the optimize button to select either the altitude we prefer or the altitude that looks better based on winds aloft and how much current right. time will take. And we don't have to do those in, the, in that order, as you said earlier. Absolutely correct. So if I want, if I look at this now and I go, well, let, you know, let me check to make sure the time still holds up with that route. Mm -hmm. I go back, I hit the evaluate button again, it's going to give me a, a new set of criteria or the, the conditions along the route. Mm -hmm. um, and it's important to know the altitude, the, the optimize button, when it out optimizes the your time on route and your fuel, it's using winds aloft. So that's that's important as well. Mm -hmm. Now, remember I said you have to give me all your aircraft characteristics? Yep. Okay. If I don't have your aircraft characteristics, I cannot calculate the fuel. Mm -hmm. And I cannot give you an accurate on route time because I don't know what it takes to get you up to altitude, cruise, and then back down. All it's going to do is give me give you an estimate of time based on the winds aloft. We're just going to pick an altitude and boom, and that's what you got. I'm going to give you, we'll pick the filed altitude and go. Okay. So the more information and the better, it's the better information you put in your aircraft profile, it makes this tool much more powerful. So I've got one question before we mm -hmm. move on from this yeah. page. Uh, can you take away the overlay there? Uh, the question is, uh, one back, I think. Mm -hmm. The question is, and I'm going to expand on it. The question is, can I edit the route of flight field even after I select the route? And I'll expand that a little more. So these three features that we've used, the, the two green box areas and the red box, we don't have to use those evaluate, plan a route, or optimize buttons at all if we don't want to, correct? Correct. Okay. So the answer is yes. If for some reason I wanted to fly even more direct than this, uh, and I wanted to get rid of a couple of the Victor Airways or something like that, absolutely. Um, this is a, 
nothing is set in stone. Well, even after you file it, it's not set in stone because you can amend it. <laughs> sure, sure. So, but the point is, you can put your cursor in there, delete and add what you want. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to keep that altitude. You can backspace it and overwrite it. Everything is, is you can enter anything in by, by typing as well as, you know, picking, you know, the optimize, evaluate. Those are just tools to help you get those. But everything is overwritable. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. If there's such a word. All right. You can do it the easy way, the hard way, however you want to look at it, the simple way, the complex way. Right. If, Whatever if, your philosophy is. If, if a route puts you maybe, because um, you'll see it overlay on weather, and let's say it puts you a little bit too close to a CWA or something like a center weather advisory or something like that, mm -hmm. and you want to move a little to the east or move a little bit to the west, that's fine. Put it in there and then, you know, do your briefing. You'll be able to look at And, and we're adding a, a button on, on this, um, on here to, to show what your route looks like. So right, right next to the plan a route button in that route field, we're going to have a map button. You hit that and it'll instantly display your route. So if you make changes and you want to see what you did, hit that wrap map button and bam. Why is my wrap now 7,000 miles long? Exactly. Maybe I miskeyed that view. Well, on people do have a tendency to, to, to miskey things. Oh, you know. yeah. Human error. That's all. I think they call that pilot error. But we don't yeah. usually admit that, no, do we? Let's go back All right. Um, okay. So let's see. We've got that. There's your optimize. I'm picking it. Step through. All right. Now, I mean, once you're at this point where you have all of your information, you, you now have a, a, a complete flight plan. Uh, you have a, your departure, you have your route, you have your destination, you get your time you want to go, your altitude, your airspeed. Now is when you would get a briefing. Briefing file, sounds you, like. You would brief it, and if you were comfortable. Now, remember, even though we were VFR along the way, there were adverse conditions. That's why you want to brief it. Right. You don't want to assume just because I saw green dots all over the place, I'm good to go. Not yet have we uh, received any and all available information. That, that is correct, and, and that's a very good point. The second you hit that brief, that standard brief button, we record that. That's like calling flight service and getting a briefing. If the FAA comes to us and says, did Joe Daniele get a, a briefing for his flight on November 5th? Uh, yes, he did. Let me check that real quick. Blah, blah, blah. And there did. And by the way, if you want to see that from top to bottom, you can either refer to the Lockheed videos or our webinar number one that we did a few months ago. Yep. All right. So now I have all that. I get a briefing. Now I'm going to create a nav a nav log. Everybody's familiar with a nav log. <clears throat> I'm going to use the flight plan that I had up there. And on the bottom, you'll see a nav log button. I highlighted in blue uh, uh, dash lines there. Um, when I hit that nav log button, it's going to bring up uh, an, an interim screen. Um, we've talked to a number of uh, pilots, and uh, when we were vetting this uh, and uh, going through the gyrations of, of coming up with a solution for this, a lot of pi some pilots said, "Well, I, I don't want to see the leg time. I don't want to see." the distance from, from point to point. I, I'm just not interested in that. So what we've done is given you the ability to deselect things that you don't want to see in your nav log. Um, I typically just leave everything the way it is and I hit my uh, continue button. Uh, no winds navigation log, that's typically for future flights, um, things where we don't have wind data anyway in the system. Um, it'll just give you a nav log and we're not going to use winds to calculate um, uh, the nav log. So I hit my continue button, and I, I know this is a little bit small to, to read. Uh, hopefully, it's coming through, you know, reasonably well. Uh, but this is your standard nav log. I think we're all familiar with this. Um, what we do is we bring the flight plan information into the nav log automatically. We bring your aircraft ID, your departure time, uh, departure. Uh, and look, the departure and destination, uh, your route, the altitude that you were gonna that you filed, the distance of that particular flight, your time en route, and how much fuel you're gonna burn for that particular flight. The next thing we do is we give you a, a blank area essentially for you guys to write down <clears throat> weather information, and this is for your departure airport. 
uh, ATIS clearance delivery, CTAF, ground, tower, things like that. Anything that you would find useful um, at departure time, this is where you would make that note. The next section is really the meat of your nav log. Uh, we're all familiar with this. Um, you're going to have your fixed names uh, down that first column, uh, your departure, all your fixes, waypoints, uh, intersections, um, down to your destination. We give you the lat long for each of them, uh, and we also give you Morse code and your frequencies. I don't think that's uh, foreign to anybody. Uh, pretty uh, standard stuff. Then in the next column, we give you your, your winds in degrees and, and knots and your temperature. Uh, the next column, we give you your magnetic heading and your calculated and, and magnetic course. Uh, the altitude um, that you're going to be flying. Uh, and then in the next one, and well, we have route, uh, but we're literally flying direct from point to point <clears throat> for this particular, um, for, you'll be flying direct all the time. Your leg in nautical miles, your remaining time. So we break up the legs and we tell you how far you've flown um, and what the distance is between each of the legs. Um, and P and some, some pilots just aren't interested in that column, so that's why we give them the option to do that. Uh, we calculate your, your ground speed, uh, leg totals uh, in time. We, we tell you how long, you're gonna, how, how long it takes to go from, from point to point. Um, and then the last column is your fuel that's, you know, that you're using. Gives you a cumulative, gives you the fuel from, from fix to fix and then what your cum is. The last section is your departure area. I mean your destination area. You write down all the information that you need uh, <clears throat> getting to your destination. We we'll give you a notes section. And the last thing I want to point out there is that we give you the ability to email this to yourself or to whomever you want, or you can print it out if you'd like. And we have an eboard coming. <laughs> what we're doing is um, we're, we're formatting it in such a way that it'll fit your kneeboard. If it runs over onto two pages, we will nicely format it <clears throat> um, and so it folds in half. Um, our guy, our user interface, Doug guy, yeah, he just knows how to do this stuff and he's got it all formatted, laid out. Um, and we're really excited for when this thing comes out in the new board size. All right, so what I'd like to do, we, we essentially covered all of the function, the, the three major functions that I wanted to cover. Uh, what I wanted to touch on um, as a reminder more than anything are, are the how-to videos that we have in our system. Uh, these are very good detailed videos. Again, Eric Alton Prescott does these for us and he knows he's very familiar with this system, uh, seasoned pilot, and take the time to go through them. The, 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 they're accessible right from the home page. You don't even have to log in if you don't want to. You can log, you know, just access these at any time. Um, we get a lot of questions sometimes, you know, about how to do certain things. Uh, we have obviously a, a help guide, um, but more importantly, and I think more important for me anyway as a pilot, when I'm on a form and I need help, I, I have the ability just to click on each of these different fields or hover over each of these different fields. <clears throat> and it gives me the values uh, uh, that are acceptable in that field. Um, the system will tell you if you've put in an invalid date, it'll tell you if you've put in uh, an invalid time uh, or if you forgot your time, uh, things like that. Uh, you can search on de your, your departure airport. If, if you can't remember what the three-letter identifier is, you can just click on that little, you see in that red box there, that little magnifying glass, um, and, and it'll bring up um, information for you uh, just to help things along. So there's a lot of help on these men on within each of these forms. And a lot of people ask us about um, uh, apps and things like that. Are you going to build an app? Are you um, are you creating one? When's it going to come out? And the answer is we're not going to create an app. Um, there there are many 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 app vendors that are out there. And what we've decided to do is work with them. 
<clears throat> so what we're doing is we interface with the app vendors. Um, you want to file a flight plan using your favorite app, we'll take it. The ones you see in, the, in green up there on the left-hand side are, are actively interfaced with us. Um, you want a briefing from them, typically you're getting the briefing through our, from, our, from our site. But we're, we're interfaced with the third-party vendors versus us going out and developing an app. And the, and the boxes on the right-hand side, the box on the right-hand side, those are the position reporting devices. I think we touched on we touched on this earlier. Uh, Delorm, Spider Tracks, um, you know, Garmin Spot. If if one of if one of these devices is in your airplane, you can contact them and they will send us position information. And for VFR flight plans, we'll literally sit there and under the covers. Um, monitor your, your flight. And when we sense something is wrong, like we've stopped receiving updates for that particular flight uh, from the box, we will initiate search and rescue. Huge value. Um, so like I said, if, if you don't see your vendor up there, contact them and put them in touch with us. We'd be, you know, and we're working with a lot more than, than what you see up there. So Joe, some of these brand names here are triggering some questions. Uh, let's let's start with where you just were and we'll work backwards a little bit. So if I've got one of these position reporting devices, you're telling me that uh, if I contact the vendor, they would then pipe my position data to you, I guess, over the internet instead of incurring additional data charges out of the airplane? Yeah, they, okay. we, we, have, we have an agreement set up with them and what they'll do is they will send it um, to us. Mm -hmm. We. Yeah, we've developed an interface with them. Um, they don't um, they don't charge the pilot for them sending us that data. It doesn't beyond what they're already paying. Correct. They have a subscription right. and things right. like that. But the point is, they don't. There's no extra fee from what I have been told so far. Mm -hmm. um, there's no extra cost involved. The, these vendors are viewing this as a safety. Uh, enhancement, and this is a good thing sure. for pilots. Not right? to mention the reason to sell their product, some other product. Yeah, of course. I'm sure that helps, but the point is that they look at it as a safety. Mm -hmm. This is helping aviation. And then once I contact the vendor, do I then have to go to the Lockheed portal as well to let it know that I have this device and that to accept the data? Yes. When you go um, very first screen, we had the um, <clears throat> the device. Uh, up in the upper right-hand corner, it said SESAR. Right. If you click on that, it brings up that window. You put in all of the information pertinent to that box that you have. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number on there that you have to enter. You then have to contact the vendor to say, hey, make that data go to Lockheed Martin um, for my flight plans. Okay. And that's it. It's, it, it's literally that simple. And it's not just position data in some cases, depending on the vendor as well. Uh, one, one other question that we received said uh, that some of, some of the features like uh, uh, ACAS, and, mm -hmm. as, you know, ACAS in particular, well, that's great, but I have to have a, my phone or my tablet with an Internet connection in the aircraft. That's not true now either, right, necessarily. Yeah. So uh, for, for, <laughs> for the alerting service, we, we notify one of three ways, text message, mm -hmm. uh, email, or over Iridium uh, through these devices by, by sending a text. Mm -hmm. So if you're flying, you're at altitude, you're obviously not going to have a 3G or uh, you know, an internet connection of, some, of any sort. So if you have one of these devices, what we can do is uplink a text message. It, it's, a, it's a shortened message, obviously, but it will tell you that you have a TFR. Mm -hmm. Say it just popped up. You now have a TFR on your route of flight. Convective segment just popped up or you're at your destination airport, uh, you, you had a, a runway closure or an air, uh, the airport closed. Mm -hmm. We'll notify you of that. We will uplink it to you and send it to you in a text. Right. So just to be very clear about that flow, I've filed my, uh, my VFR flight plan through the Lockheed Martin portal. Right. It's aware of where, where I am and where I'm going and when. Yep. I'm sending position data as well, which is an added bonus. But if a TFR pops up, what happens is the Lockheed Martin system sends a message through my vendor, such mm -hmm. as spider tracks, which goes through the Iridium satellite network, <laughs> down to the box on my dash, and then finally makes the last hop from the box on my dash to my iPad, let's say, via Bluetooth. Right. Ba bing yes. that vendor's app pops up and says, you just got a message from Lockheed Martin, hey, there's a TFR. Yes. Uh, you know, 
it, it's a complicated flow, so it, 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 I think it warrants, you know. Yeah, no, 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 I, no, that's good. But, I mean, but the end result is, is, a, is a significant increase in safety, as you said. Correct, correct. The net here is you're going to get a text message in the cockpit through that device, letting you know something has just popped up along your route of flight. Right. <clears throat> okay, so moving back to the left side of the box, uh, folks are interested in some of the uh, some of the vendors and, and what the integration might provide. For example, if Force Flight in the upper left box is talking via web services to Lockheed Martin Flight Services, uh, what flows across that across that link? What what can I do in Force Flight? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, again, each of these vendors has a very specific set of things that that they do Some and don't do. Right. <clears throat> Some only are requesting briefings from us and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Force Flight uh, is They'll file their flight plans. When they file a flight plan on for flight, it'll come to us. So it's in our system. If it's an IFR flight plan, we will then forward it off to center. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is we have that in our system. Um, and unlike other service uh, vendors mm -hmm. out there, we can modify flight plans up to 30 minutes prior to your departure time. Mm -hmm. And you can do that on their, their system as well. So if you're connected, Four flights connected to us, they can sit there and modify their flight plans up to 30 minutes, IFR flight plans up to 30 minutes prior to departure time. Um, they, if you request a briefing, we're sending the briefing to them. You can do the easy activate, easy close through four flight, oh, okay. things like that. So, okay. yeah, they, um, yeah, and again, each vendor is different. Um, so they're just coming on in, you know, requesting briefings or maybe they're just filing and things like that. Okay. Uh, another another uh, attendee tonight asked the same question about Garmin, if you could give a little picture, right? Like you said, it's a little same, a little different depending on which portions of the API they're, they're, they're supporting on the vendor side. But what are some of the Garmin inter, uh, integrations? Yeah, Garmin, we do the, um, we'll send them, um, we, the, the position report information we have in our system, so, so we'll do that. Um, and we also we have an interface with them to uplink um, ACAS uh, alerts for them right now. Um, I, I apologize. I don't have my list of, of vendor, the, the sheet I have. That's fair. I'm putting you on the spot. No, no, that, that's okay. Um, everything changes incredibly fast. Um, so I believe right now they are, uh, they're, it's yellow here, so it, it's in test mode test phase on the app side of the house. And on the um, position reporting device, we are interfaced with them with, with respect to position information. Okay. Uh, here's a uh, slightly more basic question moving off the, the, the integration topic, uh, but yet a very, very good one. If I file a flight plan online uh, with, the, with the system we're looking at here on 1-800-WXBrief.com, do I then have the ability to activate the flight plan uh, via flight services over the radio in the air after takeoff. Yes. Okay. So, yes. so yeah. I don't have to say apples to apples in the sense that if I file on in the website, I have to use Easy Activate, for example. No. Um, so you file on the website. You can activate from the website. Um, we actually have a, uh, the ability to activate on the website. You don't even need a, a, an email. Mm -hmm. but you can. There, there's a button on the website to actually activate. You take off and you want to, you feel more comfortable talking to, to the flight service, you, you can air to ground radio, you know, call them on radio, they'll have your flight plan in the system. Um, and that's true of any even web service vendor. If you file through them, mm -hmm. it's in our system whether you, you know, call flight service or use the app to activate, it, it doesn't matter. It ends up in the same place as Correct. Well. This, this, the web service, this, the specialist system, and this, the pilot web system all use the same, um, what we call database or back end, so everything's available to all three. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, we have had a number of people wondering, you know, can I see this right on a chart? Where are the charts? Where, where's the map? Where's the, the pictorial? And we simply haven't gone down the route of illustrating those tonight because we covered those last time. So what would your suggestion be to those folks who want to get some experience seeing what the pictures look like? Okay, so we have, you know, we're talking about our briefing engine now on, on the pilot web. Um, and we have made a tremendous uh, transformation from text into graphics. 
anything that can be put on a graphic in this system and that we have in data, which is almost everything now, is graphed. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we overlay a route, and then we overlay the weather on it. We overlay TFRs on it. So you have a very good picture of, of what your flight looks like. And then we calculate the times you're going to go into and out of those particular center weather advisories or convective segments. And the best way to do it, log on, get an account. Um, you, can put, you can put information in, in the system uh, on that flight plan form and request briefings, no problem. I would say stay away from filing flight plans if you're truly not going to use the flight, especially IFR flight plans. Mm -hmm. cause Center now, or ATC actually uses that to block, right? Block, you know, and reserving a spot in exactly, time and space. Exactly. So, um, by all means, get on our site, brief yourself. That's fine. There, there's no harm, but get yourself an account. And the good thing is, if you call flight service and they know who you are, that means, like, say, they when you call in, they recognize your caller ID and they say, "Hey, Mr. Johnson, uh, which aircraft are you going to be using today?" You know. Um, the account you put up that you create on the pilot web will be automatically mapped to that the flight plane you already have in um, the profile you have in our system. So if you have an aircraft profile already in in our system for specialists, it'll be carried over to the pilot web. I tell you, uh, I can't recall how many years ago it was. At least five, maybe ten. First time I called. To get a weather briefing, and I gave my tail number, and they said, "Oh, you're Skyhawk 172S." Right. And I thought to myself, "What else do they know?" Not from a Big Brother perspective. Oh no, we know everything. But but you know, the, the, when it first yeah. occurred to me uh, passively that oh, you know, they're, they're keeping notes, so maybe I don't have to give all 17 or however many boxes are in my flight plan anymore. No, that's a really good point. What, what we have is it essentially the equivalent of a caller ID. That caller ID now calls up your profile, mm -hmm. and it's the profile that you asked them to, like when you built that profile, and nothing proprietary. You know, what color keeping, is the airplane? Yeah, we're, we're keeping basic information on, you know, in the event of a search and rescue or something like that, we know who to call and things like that. But other than that, it's just your aircraft information and what kind of services do you want from the pilot from, from Lockheed Martin. All right, Joe. Well, wonderful. Uh, I need to answer this one other question that just popped up. What's the website? www.1800wxbrief.com. And from from a user, this is not coming from a Lockheed employee. It's coming from an AOPA employee. I can tell you that once you hop on and start uh, start poking around, you're going to be impressed. It's uh, it's it's a pretty fantastic tool, and I, I keep harping on the fact that you're going to tell me what my weather is at the time I pass a spot, not what the weather is going to be at the time I take off. Right, yeah. right, and and we do that because we have the ability to calculate downstream using terminal area forecasts and forecasted weather down downstream. Right. Um, and and it's yeah, um, and it, it just to and to build on the the whole website thing. It, if you've ever called flight service. The website is the same as the telephone number, 1-800-WX-BRIEF, www.1800-WX-BRIEF, okay? All right, Joe, finally, I do have to bring up a show note. Okay. It's time for us. Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh, I think we need to hold our hat in our hand for a moment. Uh, Airport identifier Alpha Sierra Hotel is not Asheville. It's Nashville, New Hampshire. Nashville. That's okay. That, I, I know it's in New Hampshire. It sounds sounds similar, yes. but uh, we we had a, a number of eagle-eyed uh, mm -hmm. webinar participants this evening call us out on that. So I wanted I wanted, no, that's good. I wanted to bring it up where we we were made aware of the uh, the slight error, Nashua or Asheville. No, I that's that's my fault. I I I knew exactly where because I mean you saw where I had the uh, sure the route. We're looking at the route and it started yeah. up up in yep. the northeast. Yep. 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 Yeah, in fact, uh, you know, uh, uh, Lynchburg to Asheville, Asheville to Hamp, or uh, North Carolina, right? wouldn't be very long. No, no, no. I, my apologies. Well, Joe, thanks so much for joining us to share these tips with our members. It's been wonderful. I, I really appreciate being here. Um, uh, so we will be, if you want, um, 
we're going to be, I'm going to be with a, a couple other, the, um, uh, our specialists will be in Tullahoma or Tullahoma, I'm not sure how, how to pronounce that, but uh, we'll be in Tennessee Saturday for the AOPA fly-in. Would love for anybody to stop by and just continue the dialogue. Uh, like I said, um, th this, this, this website was, was designed by pilots, not by engineers, so if we don't hear from you, we're not going to know what you want next. Um, we're going to have another webinar. It'll be in a couple months, um, and it'll be on, on additional features that we have in our, our website. Um, so, again, thank you so much, Ferdy. I, I can't thank you enough. Um, I, I really get a, a charge out of doing these things. It's good getting to, getting to delve into the details and answer the questions at the same time. Uh, uh, you know, we, had a, we had a large turnout tonight, so it's always nice, and you'll see the You'll see the responses 36 hours from now when, when our attendees do start to roll in down in Tennessee. Right. And then uh, for people who have asked questions that didn't get an answer, we will answer them. I like Just like our first one, if you asked a question, we answered them. So um, if, even though we didn't get to it online uh, tonight on the air, uh, we will get to it. Great. Well, thanks. And uh, <clears throat> to all our participants this evening, thanks so much for joining us as well. If you do have any aviation-related questions, as part of your AOPA membership, you can contact our Pilot Information Center staff here Monday through Friday at 800-USA-AOPA, that's 800-872-2672, and for aviation technical questions in particular, then press option 2 on your phone. You can also reach us via email here at AOPA. The easiest way to reach the Pilot Information Center is to email pilotassist at aopa.org. And finally, there's the refresher there, www.1800wxbrief.com to check out all the features you've seen tonight and more, and my homepage here at www.aop.org as well. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again soon with our third installment on yet more new and exciting features from Lockheed Martin. Thanks, Joe. Good night. Thank you.